Right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to week three, the final week of Cotswold for Beginners. And I'd like to hand over to um, Andrew Knight and Lynn Steele, uh, dancers, and Tony Warren, musician of the Knights of King Ina. Good morning. morning. Hope everybody's knees are good. We've got a fair bit to get through. Um, that one, especially for Anne, because she was dancing to Bella Head last night. Um, okay, so we've had a couple of bits of feedback um almost all of it positive one or two questions which i'll individually deal with later um what i would say though is that i have been teaching the jockey to the fair on this tradition um because it's been reconstructed from other jockey to the fairs in other traditions but with the ilmington tune so what I've done is to use the styling that um, pretty much every other jockey step styling would use. <clears throat> Hence, we're using six double steps in the foot up rather than two double steps, two singles and a jump repeated. So if you find references to the foot up in Ilmington is always a repeating four bar, two and two and a jump. Um, and I'm not teaching that. It is simply because all, every other jockey to the fair in the Morris world um, is always done with one long foot up. Um, so that's just to, to clear that one up. It would not be incorrect to do it in either direction. So you could end up doing whichever version of that foot up you like. Um, following up on this, we'll be updating with an email to the participants um, just putting some of these points across so that you've got the full notation um, and all the reasoning behind it. Okay, so one or two things. Uh, whilst we're warming up, and I see some are already warming up, um, can we just get everybody to start moving around, moving from foot to foot so that they can start their warm-ups? <clears throat> Hopefully everybody can hear me from over there. So you're literally going to start just with a fairly lazy swing of the arms and changing of the feet just to raise your breathing rate and your blood flow and to get your joints into some mobility and we'll just start with getting that blood flow coming in through to your leg muscles as well really confusing watching some yourself from the front and the back slightly out of time with yourself <laughs> quite a few people would say that i'm very often out of time with myself <clears throat> and then go to the side to get the sideways this is the time to practice your side step so that the footfall is behind the lead foot when you go And a single. Okay, have a rest for a moment. Just rest yourselves through. On reading a number of the collected notes that the collectors got from the Ilmington dancers, in Ilmington they were very keen on upright straight posture and not being on the heels. In terms of your safety, not being on your heels is actually a very good idea. So <clears throat> by coming to the room so that you can see the foot camera, when you're dancing, your heels should be just slightly off the floor. And when you land, they don't crash down. Okay, and that will give you some bounce back into the air and keep your rhythm moving. Make sure that you've got your core pulled up and then your head rising when you dance and you will find that you are lighter when you dance and you will find that you are much more easily able to go through the whole dance. <clears throat> okay, so what I'd like to do now is dance the foot up and the first slow and let's see how much you remember. 
Andrew, we can't see your feet on the front camera. No, you won't. There's a back camera for that. I don't know how to get to that one. Could you just tilt it down a little, Andrew? Yeah. You're now not going to see my hands. Is that okay? About halfway in between. Yes. Okay. Good. That's it. The edge of the desk is there. Okay, thanks, Tone. Catch your breath. <clears throat> yep. We've got sun, sunstroke issues. All right. Okay, any particular problems? Anybody wanting to comment? We'll try the hand signals we did before, which is it's all all right. I'm happy. We don't know if they can see us now because we haven't got yours. <laughs> That's true. And the hands on that, right? Thumbs up, both hands moving. If you're happy, hands on the head. If you like to repeat it. We we do very much rely on self assessment in this. So please do make sure that you're upright, that your stepping is definitely out the front and not running on the spot. OK, I can't see your feet to pick people up who think they've got it right and haven't. So that I can send them a private message and remind them. <laughs> <coughs> So we are literally needing you to take a look at your own stepping style so that you're getting that right. I hope what I'm doing is exactly what everybody remembers. The cross feet part in the first slow. Um, having looked at the traditional Ilmington Morris men, what they do to resolve that missing beat is to do another cross feet rather than the weight. So that's something that you might like to consider adding in. Yeah, can't we? Rather than waiting, I think it's an option um, rather than uh, default. We've interpreted their notes in one way and they interpret them slightly differently. We are mute. Thank you, Angie. Um, okay, if everybody's happy with that, this is going to be a very short session. 
<laughs> yeah, I've been asked to do it again. Yeah, do it again. I'll watch this time. Make sure I can see everybody's feet, please. Would you spotlight Lynn and follow her, please? Right, yeah. Not seeing me either now. We've lost you. Well done. Have another breather a moment. <clears throat> uh, I am still seeing some running on the spot from one or two <coughs> or three. Um, I'm not going to name names, but you will get private. Um, you will get private messages. And the other thing is, <laughs> um, if you jump higher, you will not be trying to hold yourself back for the music. Um, um, it's obvious everybody has their their own and preferred speed so <clears throat> and we're probably not dancing it for almost everybody actually so it is a case of um, do take a look at that um, do do much further in the air if you can and your heads don't hit the ceilings um, I can see one or two who would definitely be crashing into lights Om good luck <laughs> uh, and um, so I do understand the limitations, but at the moment there are one or two that are not bouncy um, and we do want bouncy um, and vigour in the Morris as you're taking it forward. Um, <clears throat> OK, let's have another go at that the third time and let's just have a look at, um, at seeing whether you can um, self-reflect and see if you've got that uh, to got that to go. Um, Saskia, I wasn't looking at you. <laughs> okay, spotlight Lynn, and let's do that whole thing again.
Um, Alec, we have heard the uh, some people are not muted um, request, um, and the ones that I can see, I've I've asked Pauline to see if she can mute them. Um, one of them, sadly, is my iPad. <laughs> I think that's okay it's just a camera i didn't i don't think i connected to audio so it should be all right but uh it, what happens is the music feeds back at all sorts of different timings and you just get ends up getting loads and loads of of echoes um with regards to the footing um i'm just going to go back and take a look at that somebody's clanging we don't know who might be Lynn. I'm just going to go back and take a look at the footing so that I can demonstrate what I'm meaning by the difference between running on the spot and the Morris stepping. Okay. So the running on the spot that I refer to is basically that. It's nicely on the toes but it's just under you and it's quite clearly not what Sharp et al describe. So that's um, what we're not looking for and this is what we are looking for. Can you just move back a slight bit, Drew? That's it. You might find it better on the Drew camera. So this is what we're looking for. This is not what we're looking for. This is correct, my opinion anyway. Okay. It's a picky difference, but it is what you signed up for. <laughs> uh, same thing happens in the single steps. Once you've patterned it in your head one way, it takes a long time and a lot of effort to get it out again and change it. Guilty as charged, I've had to do it. Um, because I danced it wrong for a number of years. And then when I started studying it, I worked out that I was actually doing it wrong and needed to change. So it is possible to do it. It just takes a lot of effort and a lot of thought to uh, to repattern yourself to get it there. <clears throat> I really, really want to um, to turn up to Sarah Linda's May Day. I really do. That would sounds like an excellent idea to me. <laughs> There's whiskey involved. <clears throat> um, okay, so the second slow, moving the dance forwards. <clears throat> this again is done in threes and it's done as a, a hand clapping movement and it's at head height. That's the one under your knee, two, behind oh. you, three. What should I do under the knee, not my leg? I don't straighten No, I do it on before. I just do it in front. Please don't do it so you injure yourself. All right, if you need to bend it, I guess you must, but the original notes were straight, straight legs. So it's clap, clap, clap. Clap, and it's alternate <laughs> legs. Oh, alternate legs. One, two, three. 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 And the final sixteenth marker is in front of you before you head into the two double steps, two single steps, and break. It's a bit mind-bending until you get used to it. 
May we have a C music, please? Oh, Andrew, you've got a question here. Okay, Will one moment. From Cami Kana. It's about half past six in the morning, their time. Yeah. Um, you drop your elbow into your waist so that you do an upward flick on beat one of the chorus. The other hand is just left hanging at your side. I, I, shall I just demo? <clears throat> so it would be step, hop, step, hop, flick, up. And then in there. You've got what looks to be a slight and to get you going. Um, you would come down on the and so that on one you're all ready to go. <laughs> Sorry, Alec, I'll get them. Got it. Thank you very much. So to go through that again, it would be step, hop, step, hop. We're good with that. You're good with that. Brilliant. Okay, so the hand clapping bit then. Can I get Lynn to demonstrate this one, please? Okay. Am I having music or not? When you're ready to go. Centers, we've all got it. Good, okay, absolutely. Can we do that again? Probably four or five times in a row.
okay catch your breath are there any questions now okay, how, many, so I, how many doubles are there before the um there's two doubles and then two singles yes and then into the next element is the foot the foot land thanks okay Nice to see you here, Andrew. Okay, so we're now going to do a to dance a chorus, the third, the second slow, and then the final chorus. Okay, so we're going to get a few notes intro, and then we're going to dance a B, a C, and a B. Did everybody watch, see the deliberate mistake? No? Good. <laughs> okay, one of the whilst you're having a breather, one of the other things I was wanting to put together today was to give you some kind of indication as to owning the space when you go out to dance. What I was saying about core and deportment earlier Whilst it's a health and safety thing in terms of your needing to get your, yourself in the right place so that your body works well <clears throat> and the jumps work well and you're not crashing onto your heels so your knees and your hips and your back are not at risk, it also puts you in the position for appearing very confident to the audience that you're going out. So actually when you go out there, it's you they've come to see. So own that yeah. <laughs> so that as you get out and get into the space to dance, don't apologize for being there. It's yours, all for you. And it's a real gift to be able to do that. Remember also that you are wearing a bit of a mask. So if you're not naturally gregarious and up into people, um, which I'm not particularly naturally, um, but that's not the persona that people see when I'm dancing. Right, they are seeing a Morris person who apparently can do something and then gives a show and it goes the way it goes. The worst thing in the world is thinking you've gone wrong and losing your confidence. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um going to read out that comment, Drew. Yeah, I'll read out that comment, Pauline. <laughs> From Sarah Linda says, don't apologize unless the local authorities are after you and you can't caper fast enough to get away. <laughs> <laughs> um, on one occasion, one, one friend of mine um, actually went into the uh, jig competition, John Gasson's jig competition at Sidmouth. Um, and he danced the entire dance in a mask, a genuine white mask. 
but he was portraying a wooden doll type of um, persona whilst he was out there. And at the time he was over 70 when he went in, um, a small chap um, and extremely light on his feet. Actually, a lot of the youngsters were looking at him and going, that's really good for a guy his age. That's really up there. And he never put his heels down. I don't understand the ad 80 when he came out, came out, Cammy. Sorry. And it was 80 when he went in. So it'd be 80 when he came out of the jig competition. Yeah, he felt it, I think. <laughs> um, and it was uh, it was it was lovely to see him do it um, and, and a highlight for him, a real highlight for him. He was absolutely buzzed by it completely. Um, but he went and he owned that space and he's naturally a very shy and retiring person. But he, he'd actually put that mask on and went and did it. And all I'm suggesting is you do that metaphorically. OK, so let's do that bit again. A chorus the second slow and that end chorus. while you're catching your breath the next point to make is that that is going to be the final point in your dance when you come out of that last chorus so you might want to make a look at as you land being a really big present at the end <laughs> and then you will find uh, as you come out of the, <laughs> I've only got hankies, not tea towels. <laughs> um, you might want to just take a moment to savour the applause at the end, because what I was going to move on to talk about was how to leave the dance space so that as you are there at the end, what I tend to do is to thank, Lynn is showing you the, the end position. Up to Lynn. I'm here. Okay. All right. And then it's a really good practice to flip your hankies over the top. And if the musician know that you're going to do that, they will time a, an end beat with that. Although doing that today when Lynn's not in the same room as me might be a bit more of a problem. <laughs> um, okay. That yeah. gives you a definite. I finished. It's a nice clean marker for that on the end. Uh, Joyce, I agree. That's exactly what I do. 
Joyce's comment was that I'm missing the hop before the capers and I'm adding a hop after the capers. She is 100% correct. That is exactly what I do. Well spotted. I was keeping that one to myself. To be fair, I think that's probably what we all do. Seems natural to it me. It does seem natural. Yeah. The other thing I do after the hanky flick bit um, that Lynn was demonstrating um, was to actually um, thank the audience, make eye contact with them, and actually literally just look around the crowd that are watching you, even if it's a blind dog and somebody with a pint. It, you know, it, it's it's a nice thing to get into the habit of just they've spent time to watch what you've done. Be grateful. But and respectful, uh, but actually make a point of thank you. That's a really, you know, a nice thing to be uh, to be doing. And I tend to circle the dance space and then walk off to the musician. Do remember to thank your musician. Beer works. If you do not thank your musician, they will play it just slightly off too slow, which is the worst of all possible positions to get yourself into. Too fast is not a problem. Too slow is just going to completely kill you. <laughs> um, Annabelle, yes, don't forget to collect your hat. Annabelle is an absolute dab hand at leaving her hat abandoned in the middle of a dance space. <laughs> Any number of times. And if somebody has left it, collect their hat as well. Um, don't just leave it there and leave them to it. Um, Uh, Joyce, true. if you've got time for the extra hop, go for it. Jules. Uh, hi. I'm just going to ask something which probably everyone is wanting to ask. Can you just say in words, you know, the comp after you do the capers, can you just say in words, so many single steps, so many double steps, just, you know, then you do the hanky flick. Just because when you, I'm only looking on iPhone and um, I do what I think I'm doing right, but I'm not sure I am. Um, yeah, you're going to have done... Uh, four capers, caper, 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 step, hop, step, hop, step, land, feet together. Yes. Is that what you were looking for? Yes. Brand. That's, That's looking you. good, Nick. Okay. Might be able to help me with this, but I mean, I'm not going to do it anyway as a performance. <laughs> you might, might you? And you do it. Do it. Why not? If you're the only one who can do a jig in your side, why not? What an accolade. What's the worst that can happen? They don't like it. So what? Move on. <laughs> it's a transient. Uh, right. OK, so whole dance then right from the beginning. Which way are you going? <laughs>
Okay, whilst you're catching your breaths, any questions? Whilst you're thinking and typing, <coughs> on session one, two weeks ago, a question was asked about the hands and the capers. Um, I was just trying out in that last dance whether I do the capers straight down and up or whether I put the outward flare in it. I think it quite, looks quite nice with the outward flare on the capers as well and there's no real reason why not. So you're going <clears throat> as an outward flare you would be going out up rather than down up. I will leave this to your choice <clears throat> depending upon whether you get ear old by the Ilmington Morris men or not you might want to moderate your um, your style to more closely go with exactly what they teach or you might like to just stick to your own style as an interpretation of it um, rather than the claim to be dancing it as a tradition so it's in the style of rather than from maybe a way of introducing it talking about introductions when you do go out to own your space i again tend to look at the whole audience because you mark your ground out by doing that which is very important when you're on the seafront at sidmouth there it's heaving always so actually go into a space and circle it to mark your ground. That's told the audience that that's the room that you want. You can greet them, be nice to them, but do also announce what it is you're going to show them. Um, like all good operas, you should tell them what the plot is before they lot watch it, because there's no hope of seeing it once you've actually got there. <laughs> um, Lynn, other points that you have? Um, no, I think you've covered it all, Drew, actually. I can't think of anything else. Oh, that's good. <laughs> there were those years of training you've given me. I must have done well then. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be sensible to do a little processional around the perimeter of your ground, as you say, like come in? Yes. Into a processional, like, you know, field down processional or something. Do a round of that and then go to the middle where you're going to dance. However you wish to do your performance. Yeah. Exactly. There, there, nothing is set in stone. I'm only just putting out yeah. um, that I think it's a good idea to own that space and then telling you how I go about doing that right. in that space and then how I leave for the next people to come into the space after me so that they know when I have finished and gone. And it's up to them then to take that space over from me. Okay, anything else anybody would like to ask before we do it all again? There's a question for you um, about uh, music. Uh, Keith, no, whatever you can play. As long as they can play the tune, makes no odds. Um, the, the, the music we're using, if you want to go and see the original dots, um, if you log on to um, the English Folk Dance and Song Society's library at Paul Williams Memorial Library, um, and you look in whatever the navigation requires you to do to, to look at a tune, what you will need to look up is uh, Folk Tunes by Cecil Sharp, number 2057. Number 2057 is Jockey to the Fair Morris Dance, collected by Sharp from Sam Bennett of Ilmington on January the 12th, 1909. Doesn't say that it was a jig, just says that it was a dance. There is no C music. We made it up. <laughs> the 
because we wanted to make a jig out of it and we made up the the elements we made up were taken from bold nelson and then we just literally took what does everybody else's jockey to the fair look like and then we said if Ilmington did one what would it look like do we think and this is what we think that's it's not a standard Ilmington dance it is in the style of and it is has got some credibility at least um, because it is using elements that are known and an original tune Clive, would you like to unmute and actually um, explain what your comment was? No. Okay. Yes, yes, I can get my mouse to work. Uh, All right. Yeah, what did I say? Um, yeah, I mean, the way Tony plays is very, um, it's almost staccato. It's it's very precise and it's right on the button It and it goes primarily, correct me if I'm wrong, Tony, with the feet. So. What he's doing is he's playing to the dance and the dancer and he's adjusting to their needs. What, what we need to be wary of, I would say, as Norris musicians, is that we don't deviate too far from that um, because otherwise it becomes more about the music and less about the dance. Now that notwithstanding, some have heard me say that the dance is only there to interpret the music into motion, um, <clears throat> but then I would say that, wouldn't I? Um, so yeah, anything to add to that, Tony? No, that about sums it up. The only thing I'd say stylistically is I tend to play the slows, not at half the speed, but at slightly faster, and then drop back to the original tempo at the end of the slow. Um, it would... It, 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 is less likely to cripple your dancers by requiring them to jump way too high. <clears throat> um, one more question that we've got from Sarah, I think. Um, doubling a jig is a whole nother subject. See you later. <laughs> Make it up as you go along. It's what everybody else does. <laughs> Tommy and I are going off as a couple. You just acknowledge each other as well as your audience, don't you? Yep, we 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 do. We tend to um, you know hand it hand over the baton, as it were. So um, you could come out on the the, the two single steps, and then um, they're going to do a once to yourself as two single steps, foot together, jump to come in, so that you've got a, a handover where you don't leave any dead air in there. Anybody who does radio, dead air is the worst thing in the world. It's just silence. Nobody knows what's going on. Okay, again, please. <clears throat> One more time with feeling. Well, we've got a minute. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, unless there are any other questions, can I encourage you please to warm down? <clears throat> and for warming down, it is to return your breathing to normal. It is to stretch your muscles out. So do be sure to stretch all of the muscle groups. Take your time over the stretches. In these kind of lunge positions, be sure to still engage your core. Keep the line through your leg correct through to your foot. This is the time when you're supposed to be doing a lot of technique practice as well. You haven't finished the session, even though you're warming down. You can still be thinking about your technique. The same in the warm up. Use the warm up for stepping practice, stepping and hanky practice. The Morris Federation has some warm up and warm down information which if you're a member of Federation is on their site. The music, MP3, music dots, dance notes are all available to you every time that Pauline sends you an email, the links are there. You have the information, you have the videos. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Tony. Clive. Thanks, thank everyone. you, Andrew. Jules. Massive thank you then to um, Andrew Knight and Lynn Steele and Tony Warren in his car. Poor thing. Thank you. And well done, everybody. A oh, brilliant jig. Thank you. Can you unmute yourself and give an applause for Andrew and Lynn and Tony?